This video presents examination of the motor system, which includes assessment of body position, involuntary movements, muscle bulk, muscle tone, strength, and coordination, and testing of the reflexes, which assesses both motor and sensory functions. In this video, you'll see the examiner assess a healthy patient. In clinical practice, you may detect the same normal findings in patients, or you may discover normal variations or abnormal findings. Begin the examination of the motor system by observing the patient's body position at rest and during movement. I'm going to move these up for a minute. Also, watch for involuntary movements. Can I see your hands? Next, assess muscle characteristics beginning with muscle bulk. To do this, carefully inspect the muscles of the shoulders, arms, hands, thighs, and legs, noting any atrophy. Let me do all the work here. Then, evaluate the patient's muscle tone or resistance to passive stretch. Encourage the patient to relax. Then, take one hand in yours and, while supporting the elbow, flex and extend the patient's fingers, wrist, elbow, and shoulder in one coordinated movement. The patient's arm should move easily and smoothly with little resistance. Repeat on the other side. Once again, let me do all the work. To assess muscle tone in the legs, extend the patient's leg at the knee and move the foot up and down at the ankle. Note the patient's resistance to your movements. Assess muscle strength using force compatible with the patient's strength. Usually, the patient's dominant side is stronger than the non-dominant side. Begin by testing flexion and extension at the elbow by having the patient pull and push against your hand. Straighten it out. Push away. Bend your fist back. Next, test extension of the wrist. Make a fist. Bend your fist back. My now test the patient's as as grip. You Cross your middle and down. index fingers to protect them. Then ask the patient yeah. to squeeze as hard as possible squeeze while as you try to remove your fingers. Normally, you should have trouble removing them. Continue testing muscle strength by asking the patient to turn his palm down and spread his fingers. Check abduction by trying to force them together. Relax for a second. Then, test opposition of the thumb. To do this, ask the patient to try to touch the tip of his little finger with the thumb while you resist the movement. Assess muscle strength in the legs. Test hip flexion by placing your hand on the patient's anterior thigh and providing resistance. Relax. Then, test hip extension by placing your hand on the patient's posterior thigh and providing resistance. Push your thigh down against my hand. To test Relax. hip abduction, place your hands firmly on the table outside the patient's knees. Spread your knees Ask apart. him to spread both legs against your hands. Relax. To test hip adduction, place your hands between the patient's knees and ask him to bring his legs together. Note the strength. Try to lift your foot off the table. Continue by testing muscle strength at the knee to assess extension, support the patient's knee in flexion and ask him to straighten his leg against your hand. Try to lift this foot off the table. Note the strength and compare it with the other side. Relax. Don't let me lift this foot off the table. To assess knee flexion, shift your hands but leave the patient's Relax. leg flexed at the knee. Then ask the patient to keep his heel on the table as you try to straighten the leg by pulling it upward. Again, note the strength and compare it with the other knee. Finally, test dorsiflexion and plantar flexion at the ankle by asking the patient to pull up and push down against your hand. All of these tests can also be performed with the patient seated and holding on to the table for support. Your knee up towards the ceiling. Hip flexion. Put your knees apart. Hip abduction. Hard as you can. Relax. Your hip together. adduction. Hard as you can. Relax. Knee extension. 
knee flexion, Relax down against ankle hand. plantar flexion, Relax. and ankle dorsiflexion. Relax. And to assess coordination, you'll evaluate rapid alternating movements and point-to-point -point movements. Begin by assessing rapid alternating movements. To assess the arms, show the patient how to move his hands. Observe the speed, rhythm, and smoothness of the movements. The patient's dominant hand may be better coordinated. Using your right hand, I'd like you now to Now ask the patient to tap the distal joint of his thumb with the tip of his index finger as rapidly as possible. And the other hand? Again, observe the movement's speed, rhythm, and smoothness. Touch the tip of my Next, finger with assess point-to-point right -point point movements. Do this several times, moving your finger so that the patient has to change directions. Observe the smoothness and accuracy of pointing. Clumsiness and overshooting with this movement suggest cerebellar disease. Then, with your finger in one place, ask the patient to point to it, raise his arm, and lower it to touch your finger. After several times, have the patient do this with his eyes closed. Inaccurate pointing with the eyes closed suggests a loss of position sense. Repeat on the other side. I want you to tap my to assess leg coordination, ask the patient to tap your hand as quickly as possible with the ball of each foot. Note any slowness or awkwardness. Compare sides. The feet normally perform less well than the hands. To test point-to-point -point movements of the legs, ask the patient to place one heel on the opposite knee and then run it down his shin to the big toe. The patient should be able to do this smoothly and accurately. Note any tremor or awkwardness. Assess both legs. Continue the examination by observing the patient's gait, which provides information about coordination, position sense, and muscle strength. Slowly across the room. Turn, As the patient walks, observe his posture, balance, arm swing, and leg movements. The gait should be relaxed and balanced with easy alternating arm swings. The face and head should lead the rest of the body on turns. Next, ask the patient to walk heel to toe in a straight line. This kind of gait, also called tandem walking, assesses cerebellar function and position sense. Then have the patient walk on his toes to test the strength of plantar flexion and on his heels to test dorsiflexion at the ankles. These actions also test balance. Next, ask the patient to hop in place, hop and first down. on one leg and then the other. This ability down? indicates an intact motor system in the legs normal cerebellar function, and good position sense. Good. And I want you to stand just on your Finally, right ask the patient to do a shallow knee bend, first on one leg and then on the other. Down. 